Clyde Butcher's black and white photographs explore his personal relationship with the environment. For more than 40 years, he has been preserving on film the untouched areas of landscape. In this four-part miniseries, Clyde talks about what led him to shoot black and white photography and how his career path led him from California to Florida and into the conservation movement. Three shows with Ansel Adams. This was in uh, the Ringling Museum in Sarasota. The director, it was kind of, it's kind of interesting too, because some of these museums are, uh, they only show dead guys. <laughs> <laughs> and he was so excited about seeing a live artist. <laughs> these are some of the cameras I have. Uh, this is a 1220, 1114, 810, 5745, 610 pinhole. I call this my uh, Clyde O'Wide. And that's that first camera. <laughs> I've progressed a little bit from that. But that was an amazing camera. These are the first large format lenses they've made since 1920 for big cameras. So I had to get a couple of those. I shot in California, Florida for 10 years in my black and white from 86 to 96. And I said, I want to go back to the Redwood Forest. I was in this exact spot in 1976. This is 1996. I was standing behind this tree when this one fell, the 300 foot tree. Uh, I guarantee you it makes a noise. <laughs> It was interesting to go back 20 years later and see what kind of ecosystem grew up. This is a 10 minute exposure. Most of these are 10 minute exposures. Because the Redwood Forest, you can't shoot it when the sun's up. Because it's so dark, if you have any light, that's white and the other thing is black. So you've got to do it before the sun comes up. Just 10 minutes before the sun comes up. <laughs> when you do the Redwoods, now, the best places to go, you go along the highway and you'll see a little pull-off and no signs. And there's a little pads. We spent two weeks there and I don't think we saw a person. The next year, we were right at <coughs> Artist Residence Rocky Mountain National Park. This is the little, little, little uh, beaver pond. This basically shot, it's, a, it's a hundred some degrees, it shows the, basically the whole park. Then Escalante was another project I did for the Wilderness Society. I took a bunch of shots to show Clinton. Then the Smokies, when she was talking about the Smokies, beautiful place, particularly in May. Now the upper part of May doesn't have any leaves on it yet, but the lower part in May is gorgeous. And I was, I, I like to find all these little streams, and this it's a gorgeous place. My work tries to lead you into the picture. Now when I, when I do a big print of this, like an eight-footer, and I put it down low, you feel like you're walking in the beach. Now this is the first part of my trip in 2006, Yosemite. This is, uh, well, it's close to a point that everybody shoots, but I wanted, this was a different angle, so I went downtown by the ladder, so I could get up over these, these trees on the right side of the road. So it's a whole different shot than the normal viewpoint there on the road there. When Ansel Adams was around, and you saw that first picture of me there, there weren't all these guys there. The next adventure was Delaware Gap. And within 35 miles, there's 100 waterfalls. Now, this was probably the most fascinating 12, 24 hours I had was at the Badlands. And I got up, and it was black outside. It's 200 feet from where we're sleeping. I mean, this is a wonderland, this, this whole place. The first time I was, I was at uh, the Tetons, all of a sudden there's a whoosh, whoosh, and looked over and there's a big moose this close to us. <laughs> and of course, Death Valley. I had done a workshop there for three weeks, and then after we went and left, and I, there was a little bit of a storm, and I went photographed after everything. I can't tell you how many people have been with me. When I take a photograph and I show them a print and they'll swear they weren't there. <laughs> because most people don't know how you see. 